API writing is a part of documentation that takes care of the developer experience. Just like UX writing takes care of the user, the API writing does exactly the same for a software developer. We know that developers don't mind reading a bit more detailed and technical stuff, so the onus on providing thorough details is on API writers. For that, you'll be dealing a lot with API developers to understand the usage and test scenarios. But before we jump into the details, let's first understand what an API is. An API is a programmable interface to interact with the actual programming code or functionality. This programmable interface can be written in any programming language such as Java, Python, Perl, JavaScript, or Ruby. So, you're basically reading a lot of code to understand its functions and calls, thus making it simpler for other developers to use them. It might appear overwhelming at the moment, but as you go through them, you'll find it easier to read and understand. You might end up working on one of the three APIs, SOAP, REST, or GraphQL. Let's point out some of the major differences. A SOAP API is more convenient for binary data such as images or videos and is independent of network protocol. You would find them mostly used in financial institutions or streaming services and are written in XML format. A RESTful API deals exclusively with HTTP protocol and is more lightweight than SOAP. You will be dealing with them either in YAML or JSON formats. GraphQL is a faster and simpler API and is more suited for mobile applications. It was developed as part of an open source project by Facebook and is also available in JSON. In most cases, you'll be working on REST APIs as they are still a popular choice in IT applications. You must understand the three key elements in API documentation, API reference, code samples, and recipes. An API reference is created from Open API Specifications, or OAS. It is either automatically generated from the code base or you need to skim through the code to create one. The OAS follows a structure that includes HTTP methods such as get, post, put, delete, and patch. You will be documenting them using a well-defined tabular structure that enlists functions parameters, their data type, and descriptions. To expand on its details, you need to work on the second key element that is code samples. You need to create code samples for each HTTP method and guide the developer on what's the best way to use them. The most common way is to include a curl sample request and showcase its response. While doing so, you'll be including all possible response codes, including the HTTP error codes. These error codes would be generated either at the server or at the client side. Typically, a client side HTTP error code starts with 400 series, while the server side has 500 series. You'll be learning more about them in the future videos. The third key element, API recipes, is often ignored in documentation, but it's vital that you learn to include them in your API documentation. API writers who are keen on providing a rich developer experience relies heavily on it. An API recipe is a collection of HTTP methods to accomplish a certain task. In order to understand a recipe, it's important that you talk to your API developers and understand the usual and complex tasks. This will help you to come up with your own API recipes. Now, all this process requires a lot of testing at your end. There are tools available that can help you sort it out. Your best bet will be on using Postman. But if you're using VS Code for your own writing, you could also use a plugin called Rapid API. We will be discussing more on each API documentation element format styles, and software tools in our upcoming in-depth videos. So stay tuned in.